Hello everyone. In just a few short years, Australia has emerged as a formidable force in the global mango market. Renowned for their dedication and efficiency, the Australian mango industry now boasts over 16,000 hectares of orchards in the northern region, harvesting more than 50,000 tonnes of mangoes annually. This figure stands as a testament to the nation's extraordinary prowess in cultivating this beloved tropical fruit. Let's embark on a journey to the heart of the Australian mango industry, where vibrant orchards bask in the sun's embrace. From the mango paradise of the Northern Territory's top end to Queensland, the undisputed Mango King, and the striking landscapes of Western Australia, each region contributes its own unique touch to the Australian mango story. These regions nurture a delightful array of cultivars, including the beloved Kensington Pride, renowned for its delectable flavor, the vibrant Calypso, and the mighty R2E2. Each variety represents years of experimentation and finely tuned agricultural techniques. The Australian mango industry began with small-scale orchards in the early 20th century. However, significant growth only occurred in the 1980s when scientists and farmers began applying advanced cultivation techniques and developing new mango varieties suited to the Australian climate. Through these efforts, Australian mango production has grown rapidly in recent decades, making the country one of the world's leading mango exporters. Beyond the vast expanse of land, the success of the Australian mango industry lies in the perfect blend of unique climate and cutting-edge farming techniques. It's not just about growing mangoes. The Australians have mastered the art of optimizing yield and quality through innovative methods. The success of the Australian mango industry is the result of close collaboration among various stakeholders, including farmers, play a crucial role in cultivating and harvesting mangoes according to high quality standards. Scientists research and develop new cultivation techniques and high yielding, high quality mango varieties. Packers ensure mangoes are properly processed and packaged to maintain freshness during transportation. Exporters bring Australian mangoes to international markets, contributing to industry revenue growth. From the first seedlings to the harvest of succulent fruit, Australian mango cultivation is a symphony of art and science. Every step is meticulously orchestrated for optimal growth. Even the handling and packaging of mangoes is a marvel, with skilled workers and state-of-the-art technology ensuring that only the finest mangoes are carefully selected, cleaned and packaged to preserve their freshness and quality. The Australian mango industry faces several challenges, including climate change, impacting mango yield and quality, competition from other countries, such as Thailand, Mexico and Peru. However, the Australian mango industry also has many growth opportunities, such as increasing global demand for mangoes in the international market, new market development, such as China and India, adoption of new technologies, to improve mango yield and quality.
the Australian mango distribution and export systems embody a steadfast commitment to quality and sustainability. Refrigerated trucks and intricate cold chain logistics ensure freshness in transit, while strategically placed hubs and air freight networks allow Australian mangoes to grace tables around the world. This international acclaim is fueled by Australia's rigorous quality standards and the growing demand for sustainably grown exotic fruits. With a vision focused on sustainability and a reputation for delivering premium tropical delights, the future of Australian mangoes is undeniably bright. The fruit's nutritious nature and deliciousness make it practically self-selling. Vibrant mango festivals and global reach further solidify the industry's dominance. Boasting a sizable market in 2023, Australia's blend of technology, logistics and commitment to quality sets the nation on a course to become the world's leading mango producer. The Australian mango industry is an inspiring story of dedication, innovation and commitment to excellence. Through a relentless pursuit of quality and a deep understanding of the science behind cultivation, Australian farmers have transformed the nation into a global leader in mango production. With a bright future on the horizon, the Australian mango industry is poised to continue delighting consumers around the world with its delicious and nutritious fruit. Have you ever been introduced to the fascinating pig farms nestled in the lofty mountains of China? Here, farmers ingeniously convert natural caves into optimal habitats for their pig herds. Join us as we delve into this extraordinary method of farming and uncover its distinctiveness. Globally, China is acclaimed for its robust advancements in agriculture and livestock sectors. With a population nearing 1.4 billion, this nation efficiently ensures ample food supply for its dense populace while fostering opportunities for local farmers. Their ingenuity in agricultural practices shines through in the adoption of pig farming models across various secluded mountain regions. Among these, cave pig farming stands as a hallmark of innovation and success in China's livestock industry. This approach not only yields high quality, flavorful meat, but also markedly diminishes breeding costs. This inventive and eco-friendly method of pig rearing, prevalent in Shandong province, leverages an extensive cave network to create perfect conditions for such farming endeavors. At this particular farm, the use of synthetic chemicals, antibiotics, or genetically modified substances is strictly eschewed. Ever curious about the genesis of this idea? It epitomizes intelligent creativity. Utilizing the natural terrain has yielded astonishing outcomes, allowing farmers to economize by repurposing these caves as shelters for their pigs. This strategy not only slashes investment costs, but also fosters a natural and serene habitat for the pigs. Within these caverns, pigs relish in warmth during winter and coolness in summer, all without the reliance on external cooling or heating apparatus. This method minimizes the dependency on peripheral temperature control equipment, while the cave farm's layout affords pigs ample room to roam and forage freely. 
Moreover, the diet of these pigs includes a variety of organic feed like corn, red apples, and grapes, ensuring a rich and balanced nutrition. The inclusion of these natural components not only augments the pork's delectability, but also secures consumer health safety. If you find this intriguing, rate it with a number one. The free-range black pork is lauded for its exquisite taste and superior quality. Distinguished from conventional pigs, black pigs enjoy a free-range existence in natural settings, feasting on organic sustenance. As a consequence, black pork boasts unique benefits, including a natural sweetness and a nuanced richness, offering an unparalleled gastronomic experience. Rich in protein, vitamins, and minerals, it supplies abundant energy. Imagine the surprise of encountering a colossal skyscraper on the outskirts of a bustling Chinese city. Could it be an office block or a luxury residence? Contrary to expectations, it houses thousands of pigs. This massive pig edifice represents a modern and distinctive approach to pig farming, standing as the world's largest single pig farm with a capacity for slaughtering 1.2 million pigs annually. This pig hotel is at the forefront of modernity with every need of its inhabitants met by an advanced AI system, ensuring precise and intelligent feeding and watering. The Iberian pig, also known as the black pig or Spanish pig, is celebrated for its exceptional meat quality and unique fat layer, crucial for producing the renowned Jamon Iberico smoked meat dish. Its free-range lifestyle and specialized diet contribute to a unique flavor profile and unmatched meat quality. Unlike other pig breeds that reproduce biannually with litters of 8 to 10 piglets, black pigs stand out for their expansive natural habitats. In vast grasslands, farmers embrace open spaces for raising black pigs through natural methodologies, asserting the vital role of the natural environment in enhancing the delectable and nutritious quality of black pork. Thanks to free-range grazing, black pigs enjoy a content, healthy, and comprehensive lifestyle. Over centuries, Iberian pigs have been seamlessly integrated into the characteristic Mediterranean setting of the Dehesas, vast grasslands dotted with home and cork oaks, providing an ideal environment for this unique breed. The food source is pivotal in defining the nutritional value and uniqueness of this meat, enriched by a diverse and particularly suitable diet, conferring distinctive traits unmatched by any other meat type. Living freely, merging with pristine nature, and indulging in a plentiful and varied diet, these are the secrets behind the exquisite flavor of Iberian pork. Creating quality Jamon Iberico entails numerous detailed steps, achievable only by passionate artisans. The process involves careful salting, 
drying, and aging in unique cellars, allowing the meat to develop its characteristic flavor while absorbing aromas from its surroundings. A meticulous journey spanning months to over three years, depending on each piece's size and fat content, with regular quality checks by expert charcutiers. Have you ever savored jamun iberico? The rich and luscious taste of this cured and air-dried ham from the Iberian pig's rear leg will transport you into a world of enticing flavors. Do you know of any areas where farmers thrive and become wealthy by breeding extremely dangerous creatures? Crocodiles, scorpions, or venomous snakes are not only life-threatening, but also constitute the primary income source for many farmers. Notably in Indonesia, there exists a unique tradition of snake processing. We invite you to discover the most unique snake processing area in Indonesia. In a small village in the West Java province of Indonesia, traditional snake slaughterhouses have been developed, producing snake meat and skins. Traditional snake skin factories churn out hundreds of snake skins daily, serving as a crucial livelihood source for the local populace. Snake skin serves as the primary raw material for various products such as bags, shoes, wallets and belts. The materials for making snake skin include all types of snakes captured in the wild or bred on farms, encompassing both venomous and non-venomous species. Snakes are captured in the wild when they are about three to four years old. Villagers partake in this activity and get paid for each snake they capture. Organized groups of fishermen often lay traps, nets and hooks in forests and grasslands, targeting both adult pythons and other smaller snakes. Some areas also cultivate snake farms to supply raw materials to processing facilities. Daily, these farms can supply hundreds of standard snakes to centralized snake processing locations, helping to conserve snakes in the wild and prevent significant population declines. At centralized snake processing facilities, snakes are sorted by size and type. Larger snakes fetch a higher price. They are then placed into large containers or tanks filled with water because this method results in a large number of snakes dying without pain during the slaughter process. Each snake's skin is separated from its meat. All these steps are manually performed by the locals. The skin must be clean and undamaged to ensure quality. After separation, the snake skin is cleaned and then placed in the drying and storage area before merchants come to purchase. When these snake skin panels reach Western fashion houses, their prices can soar up to $4,000 each. The high prices and profits have enticed many localities to engage in the snake processing industry, thereby generating a significant number of jobs for Indonesian workers. The snake farming industry employs approximately 175,000 workers and around 15,000 snake catchers. This is considered the largest raw material processing and supply region. After processing, snake meat is utilized as food and can be sold at local markets. Local residents consume snake meat for similar reasons to other meats, namely to provide essential protein for the body. Not only is snake skin highly valued, but Indonesians also process snakes by drying them whole. They coil each snake's body into a circle and place it in an oven to dry. After one day, the snakes become dry and hard. This is the primary ingredient used in Eastern medicine and is primarily exported to the Chinese market. Dried snakes have been utilized in many traditional medicine methods worldwide. They are deemed beneficial for regulating blood circulation and are also used to treat conditions like aral gear syndrome. Perhaps everyone knows that snake venom plays a crucial role in modern medicine, but few are aware that snake bile is also considered an important component in traditional medicine. Carefully selected and dried for long-term preservation before being sold or exported. Not only famous for snake processing, Indonesian people are also known for making python skins, 
a skill passed down from generation to generation. Adult pythons can weigh up to 200 dalda b and live freely in forests where local people hunt them because each python skin is much more valuable than a typical snake skin. At python skin processing facilities, work is mainly done by hand. After the pythons are deceased, water is pumped into their bodies to facilitate the skin separation process. Every step is meticulously carried out primarily by experienced individuals. After separation, python skins are placed into a drying oven and eventually dyed according to the desired style and shape of the final product. Each large python skin can sell for $10,000, thus attracting a lot of local workers. Are you curious about the fresh taste of watermelon? Join us on an exciting journey to explore recent advances in the field of watermelon cultivation and harvesting technology. Today, we will delve into the green world of agricultural landscapes and learn more about the watermelon production process from a scientific perspective. Do not hesitate to share this passion with your friends and family as we venture together into this fascinating journey. Remember to subscribe, share and turn on notifications to not miss out on our latest discoveries. Did you know that plastic mulching is a highly effective agricultural method widely used in watermelon farming? Plastic mulching not only improves harvest yields, but also effectively manages weed growth. This process starts with careful soil preparation, removing any unwanted vegetation, rocks and debris. Next, the plastic mulch is meticulously laid over the prepared beds, mainly to help retain soil moisture by reducing evaporation, thus ensuring sufficient water supply for watermelon plants, a crucial factor especially in dry and hot climates. Next, meet the Green Harvester DH, a high-tech solution. Designed to optimize agricultural operations, saving precious time and labor while promoting efficiency and sustainability in farming practices. This machine automates the process of digging and planting at precise intervals, also providing essential hydration to seedlings and for their growth. With the introduction of this technology, watermelon farming has become simpler and more efficient than ever, reflecting the perfect combination of traditional cultivation methods and advanced technology. On average, watermelons need about 70 to 100 days to reach harvest maturity. Argales's advanced harvesting machines, with their impressive working width of up to 17.2 meters, mark a significant breakthrough in agriculture, transforming the entire watermelon harvesting process by integrating modern technology and enhanced functions. This device promises to meet all the needs of farmers and boost productivity to unprecedented levels. With its large working width, the machine allows for the simultaneous harvesting of a large quantity of watermelons in a single pass, optimizing efficiency and reducing labor requirements. Its ability to automatically detect positions and adjust harvesting widths maximizes land use while ensuring accurate and efficient harvesting of each watermelon. Utilizing automation technology and intelligent systems, the harvesting machine operates with remarkable precision and efficiency, minimizing the need for manual intervention. This not only brings economic benefits to farmers, but also helps them save valuable time and energy, allowing them to focus on other meaningful agricultural activities. The prime time for watermelon harvesting is quite short, and manual harvesting requires a lot of labor, often leading to fatigue. However, thanks to technological advancements, modern watermelon harvesting machines have significantly improved the production process. These machines not only quickly harvest and package watermelons, but also minimize waste and losses, establishing a robust and efficient production system. Watermelons are carefully inspected and sorted based on size and quality before being packaged in standardized containers, ensuring food quality 
and safety throughout the journey from farm to consumer. Ensuring fresh watermelons meet strict quality standards, this stringent process plays a crucial role in the development and prosperity of the agricultural industry in California, providing the market with delicious and nutritious watermelons. The CMAX product line, designed for processing watermelons, mini watermelons and cantaloupes, brings an innovative and advanced solution to the industry. Its latest calibrator includes weight sensor systems specifically designed for cantaloupes, round mini watermelons and elongated large watermelons, offering significant value-added features. The innovation highlight of this product line lies in its ability to provide a comprehensive and flexible solution for processing various types of fruits. With the integration of weight sensor systems, precise calibration of cantaloupes and watermelons is achieved, ensuring the production of high quality goods. The diversity of this product line allows it to meet varied processing requirements for cantaloupes, mini watermelons and watermelons, serving different fruit sizes and shapes. As a comprehensive and reliable solution for fruit producers, this solution seamlessly combines innovation, simplicity, flexibility and quality assurance into one advanced platform. Introducing the K-Machines Watermelon Grading Machine, an innovative and precise device that uses modern technology to meticulously sort watermelons by size, shape and colour. With seamless operation and outstanding efficiency, this advanced machine boosts productivity while minimising waste, providing convenience and time-saving benefits to both farmers and watermelon processing businesses ultimately ensuring the delivery of top quality watermelons to consumers. Are you a fan of robots? It's evident that advancements in agricultural technology specifically through the integration of robotics, are revolutionizing the way we approach farming and food production. This transformation is not just about automation, it's about enhancing efficiency, sustainability, and the quality of the food we consume. Let's delve into the various facets of this technological evolution. Robot harvested farmlands, a reality of modern agriculture. The journey of food from farm to table is undergoing a remarkable transformation with the introduction of robotics in agriculture. Millions of acres of farmland are now harvested by robots rather than human hands. This shift towards automated harvesting isn't just about replacing human labor, it's about optimizing the entire agricultural process Robots with their precision and endurance can perform tasks more efficiently and for longer periods, thereby reducing labor costs and increasing productivity. The rise of six-axis harvesting robots. The advent of six-axis harvesting robots is a significant milestone in agricultural technology. These robots are equipped with advanced sensors and cameras, enabling them to identify, pick and process crops with incredible accuracy. The technology behind these robots includes multi-jointed arms that mimic human dexterity, but with greater precision and without fatigue. This leap in technology is transforming how delicate fruits and vegetables are harvested, minimizing damage and waste. benefits beyond efficiency. The implications of robotic harvesting extend beyond mere efficiency. These machines work tirelessly, reducing the dependency on manual labor 
which is particularly beneficial in regions facing labor shortages. Moreover, their ability to selectively harvest ensures that only ripe produce is picked, enhancing the quality of the yield. Additionally, robots improve working conditions by taking over monotonous or hazardous tasks and play a crucial role in gathering data for crop analysis, which can lead to better crop management decisions. Challenges and the road ahead. Despite the evident benefits, the transition to robotic harvesting faces challenges, including the high initial costs and the need to adapt these technologies to various crops and conditions. However, ongoing research and development are swiftly addressing these issues, with improvements in artificial intelligence, sensor technology and robotic dexterity, making these robots more versatile and cost-effective. Weeding Robots, the next chapter in agricultural innovation. Another groundbreaking application of robotics in agriculture is in weed control. Traditional methods, often reliant on herbicides, are not only labor-intensive, but also pose environmental risks. Weeding robots, equipped with image recognition technology, offer a precise and eco-friendly alternative. By identifying and eliminating weeds without harming the crops, these robots conserve biodiversity and reduce chemical usage, aligning with the increasing demand for sustainable farming practices. The future of farming, seeding and fertilizing robots. Beyond harvesting and weeding, robots are also revolutionizing seeding and fertilizing processes. Seeding robots, guided by GPS and cutting-edge technology, ensure optimal seed placement and spacing, leading to better resource utilization and crop yields. Similarly, fertilizing robots tailor nutrient application to the needs of each plant minimizing waste and environmental impact. These innovations underscore the potential of robotics to enhance every aspect of farming, from planting to harvest. Conclusion. The integration of robotics into agriculture marks a significant leap towards more sustainable, efficient and productive farming practices. As technology continues to evolve, the potential for further innovations in agricultural robotics is vast, promising a future where farming is not only less labor intensive, but also more in harmony with the environment. The journey of food from seed to table is becoming more sophisticated, ensuring that the agricultural sector can meet the growing global demand for food without compromising on quality or sustainability. In this video, we're exploring some of the most extraordinary and unique architectural wonders around the world. Structures so unusual, they seem to defy the laws of reality. Wangxi Scenic Area China. Let's start with the breathtaking Wangxi Scenic Area 
in China's Hubei province. This natural paradise welcomes visitors about to embark on a journey to a magnificent attraction. Here, pristine natural beauty blends with grand architecture crafted by skillful Chinese artisans. Legend tells of a white crane carrying a wild fruit to save villagers stranded on a cliff during an ancient flood. This act inspired the name Baihi, meaning white crane cliff. Taoist hermits built houses on the cliff, drawn by its spiritual energy. Baihi is a sheer rock face towering over 350 feet above the valley. Atop this mountain, you'll discover panoramic views, a perfect introduction to the incredible scenery, showcasing the harmony between untamed beauty and Chinese architecture. Castelfolit de la Roca, Spain. Wow, just look at this. The scenery is truly breathtaking. Have you heard of Castelfolit de la Roca in Spain? This mystical village sits perched impossibly high on a cliff. The unique design makes it feel like it's reaching for the heavens. Imagine the effort to build these houses clinging to the cliffside. The streets are so charming, full of ancient character. Life here must be incredibly peaceful. This small community has a warm sense of intimacy. I wonder what stories this place holds. Oh, and look at the ancient church of San Salvador. Every corner here is full of history. Rocamadour, France next up. Rocamadour in France, a genuine architectural and historical treasure. Built upon towering cliffs, it's far more than a tourist spot. It's a living legend. This bird's eye view reveals ancient buildings seemingly carved directly into the cliff face. It's simply magical. Imagine walking the steep pathways to the churches and monasteries. Every step here is like turning a page in history. And the story of the Black Madonna of Rocamadour a sacred symbol said to perform miracles. It draws thousands of pilgrims each year. Bonifacio, Corsica. Just look at Bonifacio in Corsica, it's incredible how nature and history merge so perfectly. Perched atop magnificent white cliffs overlooking the endless blue sea, this city is a living museum. The ancient houses and winding streets feel like stepping back in time, while the marina bursts with life and color. And the legend of the staircase of the King of Aragon. In 1420, his army is said to have carved 187 steps into the cliff overnight for a surprise attack. True or not, the staircase shows the town's intriguing past and the view from the top is simply spectacular. Vernazza, Italy. From this aerial perspective, Vernazza in Italy unfolds like a dream. Nestled within Cinque Terre, this enchanting village is a masterpiece of vibrant color and rich history. Colorful houses cling to dramatic cliff seeds, overlooking the stunning blue Mediterranean, its breath to king. Watching boats gently bob in the harbor and waves lap the shore brings an incredible sense of tranquility. It's like a living painting that changes with the light. As the sun sets, a golden glow washes over the village, highlighting the ancient church and castle ruins. Village, Vietnam, wow, 
Kua village in Vietnam's Yen Bai province is a hidden gem, surrounded by majestic mountains. It's like a vibrant tapestry woven into nature. Terraced rice paddies weave through the clouds, a truly poetic scene. From above, the traditional art of Hmong textile weaving is a stunning sight. Each colorful thread tells stories of the local people. Observing daily life unfolds like a heartwarming scene. Traditional stilt houses, children laughing, a truly vibrant canvas. Zhou Temple, Tibet gliding over mystical Tibet, we discover Zhou Temple, a sanctuary of serenity, perched within the stark, majestic mountains. This is a testament to the deep spiritual heritage of the region. Even from this height, fluttering prayer flags add a vibrant touch, symbolizing hopes ascending to the heavens. Constantine, Algeria. Constantine, Algeria is steeped in history and dramatic beauty. Founded over 2,000 years ago, this city sits atop towering cliffs with bridges traversing deep gorges. It's where ancient structures blend with the rugged landscape. Dosalam Monastery, South Korea. Finally, the mysterious Dosalam Monastery in South Korea. This isn't just a monastery, it's a beacon of history and spirituality. Legends tell of a sage monk achieving enlightenment after years of solitary meditation here. These are just a few of the world's most incredible and unusual places. Which one would you most love to explore? Despite their traditional association with the wetlands and rivers of Africa and Australia, crocodiles have captured the fascination of many Americans, emerging as both a lifestyle choice and a hobby for the adventurous. Embarking on the journey of crocodile cultivation is not a venture for the timid. It demands meticulous attention and comprehensive care to foster these ancient reptiles successfully in a captive environment. In an exploration across the United States, we delve into the meticulous care and management of approximately two million crocodiles, shedding light on the complexities and rewards of crocodile farming on a grand scale in this nation. The initiation into crocodile farming necessitates a discerning selection of species, each presenting unique challenges and requiring specific conditions for optimal growth. This decision is crucial as the spectrum of crocodile species ranges from the more docile, manageable types to those that exhibit heightened aggression necessitating specialized handling. Prominently, the American alligator, indigenous to Florida and other southern locales, stands out for its formidable size and strength. This species has become a preferred choice for commercial farming, serving both the meat market and as a magnet for tourism. Upon the selection of an appropriate species, the focus shifts to creating an environment that closely mirrors the natural habitat of these creatures. This includes expansive aquatic spaces for swimming, sun-drenched sandy areas for basking, and shaded spots for repose. The enclosures must also be equipped with temperature regulation systems to emulate the ambient conditions of the crocodile's natural environments, 
ensuring their well-being and healthy development. Nutrition plays a pivotal role in the cultivation process, requiring a diet tailored to the specific needs of the species and stage of development. This diet ranges from small fish and insects for younger crocodiles to larger prey for adults. Some farmers opt to breed their own feed to guarantee nutritional adequacy, emphasizing the need for fresh, properly sized food portions to facilitate feeding and maintain cleanliness. The aspect of health and safety cannot be overstated in crocodile farming. These reptiles are susceptible to various diseases and infections, which, if unaddressed, could lead to detrimental outcomes. Regular veterinary examinations are indispensable, aiming to preemptively identify and treat any health concerns. Moreover, the slaughtering and processing of crocodiles for their meat and skin involves sophisticated methods that underscore the necessity for precision and expertise. This phase is labor-intensive, relying on skilled workers to manually handle the tasks with care to ensure the integrity of the crocodile products, especially the highly valued skin. Crocodile farming represents a unique convergence of tradition and innovation, offering substantial economic potential with a relatively modest initial investment and manageable cultivation techniques. As global demand surges, this practice is poised not only to flourish within the United States, but also to inspire a global movement towards sustainable and profitable crocodile farming. In conclusion, the realm of crocodile farming is both challenging and enriching, beckoning those with a profound interest in these majestic creatures to engage deeply with the natural world. It demands an amalgam of knowledge, skill and commitment, from the careful selection of species to the nuanced provision of habitat and nourishment. For the dedicated, crocodile farming transcends mere animal husbandry, evolving into a profoundly rewarding engagement with one of nature's most enduring survivors. Did you know that the luxurious texture of merino wool is cherished by countless individuals across the globe? This esteemed fabric is renowned worldwide for its unparalleled softness. But have you ever pondered the journey behind the creation of this remarkable material? Let's delve into the meticulous process that transforms the wool from over 78 million Australian sheep into the merino wool, revered in the fashion industry. Annually, sheep worldwide contribute two to three million tons of wool, a testament to its revered attributes. Wool stands not just as a globally favored textile, but also symbolizes unparalleled softness and intricate curls. Beyond its resistance to wrinkles, wool's ability to retain shape, superior moisture wicking, and thermal insulation make it a coveted choice for premium fashion items like luxurious sweaters and elegant coats. Its inherent resistance to odors and stains further simplifies maintenance. Wool's journey from fleece to fabric has spanned centuries, with evidence suggesting sheep domestication for wool began around 10,000 years ago. The pivotal moment in wool history occurred in 1797, when England introduced sheep to Australia. Laying the foundation for the world's leading wool industry. Since the 19th century, Australian shearers have transitioned from manual shearing to utilizing electric machines, managing the fleece from over 78 million sheep and producing approximately 350 million keen of wool annually. This intricate process starts with sheep breeding and management optimizing wool growth in cooler climates. 
Shearing, a crucial step performed by skilled shearers, involves electric clippers to carefully remove the fleece, aiming for efficiency and animal welfare. Post shearing, sheep receive nutritional support to enhance their health and prepare for the next growth cycle. Curious about the amount of wool a farmer can shear in a day? On a productive day, an experienced shearer might handle 140 to 200 sheep, utilizing a harness for efficiency and comfort. After shearing, the wool undergoes sorting and classification, preparing it for the next stages of cleaning and dyeing. Wool quality is determined by fibre fineness, with softer fibres designated for high quality merino wool products. As we embark on this exploration of merino wool production, from shearing to sorting and beyond, let's appreciate the artistry and labour that go into creating the woollen treasures we enjoy. Embark with us on an enchanting voyage through boundless meadows, where countless deer commence their life's journey. Step by step, they evolve into a valued treasure trove of velvet antlers. Visualize setting foot in this realm, where the sunlight tenderly embraces the vibrant green fields, and nature's melodious chorus merges with the gentle patter of deer hooves, crafting a splendid vista. Embark on this marvelous expedition with us traversing vast terrains where nature's marvels reveal themselves at every corner. For millennia, deer have been domesticated, a bond forming between them and humans as our ancestors shifted from nomadic to settled ways of life. This domestication journey has led to the emergence of deer breeds that are domesticated, showcasing adaptability and a deep bond with humans. The practice of deer farming encompasses meat, antler and fur production, alongside breeding, ecological tourism and managed hunting, fostering a multifaceted relationship with these graceful creatures. Across the globe, in nations like New Zealand, Australia, the US, Canada, the UK, China, Russia, and various European countries, deer farming has flourished. These regions are not merely hubs of modern agriculture, but also bastions of prosperity and diversity in deer husbandry, catering to meat, antler, fur production, breeding, conservation, tourism, and more. Notably, New Zealand stands as the premier provider of deer velvet, with around 1.2 million deer across some 3,000 farms, creating a pristine breeding ecosystem. Can you perceive the allure of these deer? If so, indicate with a one. If otherwise, a zero is welcome. Let's delve into the nurturing of newborn deer until they're ripe for velvet harvesting. Deer gestation spans 195 to 205 days, with mid-spring being ideal for reproduction. Typically birthing a single fawn deer may occasionally have twins or triplets. At birth, fawns weigh merely five to eight libi. Mothers camouflage their newborn scent from predators by licking them clean post-birth, and fawns ingest their placenta. Initially spotted, their fur changes over months, relying initially on maternal milk before transitioning to solids. A doe nurses her fawn several times daily for the first four months, even as they start grazing. Fawns learn edible plants from their mothers, growing swiftly to weigh 60 to 70 libi within months, gradually exploring more while staying near their mothers for safety. 
female deer often remain with their herd and mother for life, unlike males who might venture solo or join other herds by age two. On farms, separate areas are often designated for juveniles, ensuring a stable, manageable setting for health monitoring and medical care if needed. Velvet harvesting takes three to five years, involving careful nurturing and monitoring for optimal growth with antlers enveloped in nutrient-rich velvet. Depending on species and size, a deer's velvet yield varies from 100 to 300 kilos. Upon reaching the desired velvet size and quality, deer are harvested, employing gentle restraint or anesthesia for safety. Post-harvest oatmeal powder is applied to the cut area to prevent infection and aid healing, minimizing stress and injury risks. The velvet then undergoes boiling and drying to eliminate impurities, followed by air drying under optimal conditions, avoiding direct sunlight. Finally, the velvet is cut, dried further, then packaged and labeled for medicinal use. Processed deer velvet, weighing around 800 G, yields about 250 G of medicinal material, acclaimed for enhancing muscle strength, cardiovascular health, mental well-being, and offering numerous other benefits, including joint comfort and flexibility enhancement. Post-harvest, deer are fed a balanced, nutrient-rich diet for swift recovery, encompassing protein and vitamins to support health and antler development. Their habitat must be safe, spacious, with clean water and protection from harsh elements, ensuring their well-being and readiness for the next velvet season. Do you believe there are fish that live without water? Indeed, in Africa, amid arid lands and hot climates, there still exist fish species that live underground. They do not require water, but can survive for years. So, how do these fish survive? We invite you to explore with us now. Fish can live without water. Lungfish, a fish species that has existed for hundreds of millions of years globally, still retains the instinct to live without water. This is also one of the reasons this fish species survives in the harshest conditions. Everyone knows that Africa is a rid land with the dry season typically lasting at least four to five months, causing all rivers and lakes to dry up. To survive, lungfish have developed a unique respiratory system and a summer sleep mode, Lungfish have a long body similar to an eel and strong pectoral and abdominal fins that help them move easily on land. They usually inhabit shallow waters, such as swamps, but are sometimes found in large lakes. Adult lungfish can weigh 10 kilos and measure 1.25 miles in length, with the largest specimens reaching up to 2 meter. When they enter the water, they move and feed like other fish, but during the dry season, they dig a deep hole in the young mud layer by consuming mud with their mouths and expelling it through their gills. Once a sufficient depth is reached, they stop digging and secrete mucus from their mouths to harden the mud, forming a cocoon around themselves with only the mouth exposed to the outside for air. During their summer sleep, they limit their metabolism. When water returns, they emerge from their burrows and start the process of searching for food. The lungfish's primary diet includes frogs, tadpoles, small fish, snails, shrimp, and earthworms. They also consume plant material. However, lungfish do not damage agricultural crops. Moreover, since the land in this region is not conducive to agriculture, farming has not strongly developed in West Africa, so lungfish do not harm agriculture in the area they inhabit. Given their survival ability, can lungfish be cultivated to help improve the lives of African people? Several studies suggest that lungfish can be farmed as food for indigenous people with a favorable climate because these fish do not live entirely underwater. People only need to create shallow lakes to raise them. Furthermore, the dry season lasting several years does not cause the fish to die from impaired lungs. Thanks to their omnivorous diet, Lungfish are also very easy to raise and grow in ponds and lakes. However, one characteristic is that lungfish do not coexist well with other fish species. 
They will attack, drive away, and even eat other fish, so ponds and lakes can only cultivate one species of lungfish. Although research indicates that lungfish can be developed for farming, it is challenging for indigenous people to implement this due to the terrain not being conducive to creating lakes for fish farming. Thus, the lungfish farming project has not yet been realized. Taking advantage of the lungfish's summer sleeping mechanism, Africans often dig the ground to catch them. They use lungfish as a sustainable food source. Native African people dig for lungfish to eat or save for later when they need fresh fish. However, the flavor of this fish is not highly regarded because its meat taste is too strong. Lungfish are mainly valued for food, but they do not hold significant economic value because not everyone appreciates the strong taste of lungfish meat. Nonetheless, people still catch lungfish in the wild for food. They use simple tools to dig through the dry soil and find a clay cocoon containing a lungfish inside. The appearance of this fish is similar to the Asian catfish. Lungfish are caught and processed into a protein source for indigenous people. Lungfish is prepared by grilling or frying with some typical spices to help remove the fishy smell of the meat. If you've enjoyed exploring these ideas with us and want to stay updated on the latest content, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with friends and family who might also find it interesting, and subscribe to our channel. Remember, your engagement is our greatest motivation. So like, share and subscribe for more amazing discoveries.